let me be honest, I've tried three times committing suicide because of my property. It's for my kids. My kids has to have a right to shelter. It's their property. It's where these guys will bury me. I won't be buried in a cemetery somewhere else. It's where I'll be buried. Up on the in the ZQ. Hmm? She threatened me. I remember I used not to sleep. I couldn't sleep. So she's comfortably sitting in my house. Knowing very well that Duncan, I couldn't get what I find. Can you imagine? To make exchange your property. I love your property to make exchange now. I love you to too comfortable unaishi kwa nyumba yangu. All I want is justice. It's not it's not an easy thing. It's not a good thing being poor. It's not a good feeling being a beggar. She made me to be a beggar. Uh, this is Duncan Kibet. I was um, an athlete sometimes back and um, I was doing really well. And after which I developed an injury with the groin and uh, it forced me to be out for a very long time. My athletics career started in uh, 2002, I think. That was when my elder brother had started competing outside the country. But though at that time I was still scared because in 1994 I was involved in an, in an accident. And unfortunately I broke my leg. So that time, 2002, um, I was a little bit scared because, well, my brother was, 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 was asking me like, uh, just give it a try, you know, if it doesn't work out, forget about it because it's not a must that you follow my footsteps. So that that year I started training slowly by slowly though I was still, you know, feeling, you know, having that scared thing that maybe uh, my leg has not healed 100%. 2006 I joined Rosa and Associates Company. 2007 you remember there was some some clashes within the country, and uh, at that time the company um, engaged us and asked us that we are going for training, not in the country but outside the country. So the company flew us to Namibia. We went to Namibia for like uh, three months. While in Namibia we were doing a very good training. We did a very good training because the place was nice. And, uh, you know, we, we were following what was going on in the country. That is until when um, the late Kofi Annan came and did what he did and everything came to normalcy. That was when we came back. And uh, I had been booked for a race in Italy. No, in Austria. That is Austria Marathon. The first marathon. I went there and... Um, with the little experience I had from the training, which Claudia had, had actually uh, asked me to follow, and we did it. I, I, I ran very well, and I was happy because I was second place with a good time of 2.08.53, and I was happy with it. Claudio again was happy with it. I came back home. Claudio was like, now we need to resume the proper training now, because this is your first marathon, and you ran 2.08.53. That means there's still room for you to perform. And I, I accepted because uh, I liked uh, uh, the training. I mean, I had that passion in athletics that I can, I can do much better. I can perform better than what I had done before. So we received the training, we did a very good training. And um, uh, I remember I went for the next before I went for the next marathon, that was the following year, 2008 in Rome, 
I had competed in some races in US, like the um, 10K in uh, Beach to Beacon, where I won with a very good time of 27 for the one. I had ran a big seven, first place. I remember again, I ran um, a San Jose half marathon. I went to Rome Marathon. Uh, I ran Rome Marathon. I won first place with two hours and seven minutes and 53 seconds. The third marathon, which was uh, Rotterdam Marathon. That was 2009. I went there. Actually, I was uh, I was thinking maybe I would run my BP, which was not what I did. I was thinking of maybe running 206, but it turned out that I ran 20427. At that time, I was the second fastest marathon marathon ever in the world after Haile because Haile had ran 20359. So I missed the world record by around 27, 29, maximum 30 seconds. And everybody was like, Duncan, you can break the world record. Everybody was happy. In fact, I was happy too because I was not expecting to perform how I performed. Claude asked me one question that, Duncan, do you want to attempt the world record in Berlin the same year, that was 2009? I told Claudio, yeah, let's give it a try. It's just a question of, you know, going back to training and giving it a try. If it works out, well, you know, we've done it. If it doesn't work out, then we still have some more years. We can still, you know, perform much better than that one. So during the training uh, season towards uh, Berlin Marathon, I had started feeling some pain in my groin. And I remember I mentioned that to Claudia, and Claudia was like, uh, Hey, Duncan, if the pain is too much, then let's forget about the, the Berlin and concentrate on the treatment. At that time, you know, I was, I was like, you know, I want to do it. I want to break the world record. I told Claudia, no, let's go for it. Uh, if, uh, if it works out well, if it doesn't work out because of the pain, then, you know, we can come back to the treatment and the next year which was 2010 we can think of doing something else i remember i went to berlin Haile was there and uh, everybody was eager everybody was watching everybody was waiting for for the world record either from me or from Haile. i went there we you know the race was started though the pain was still there I remember after 20 kilometers, the pain was unbearable. So I chose not to follow the first group, the world record pace. Uh, I chose to stay behind them and see and weigh if the pain is will, will go down or if it doesn't go down, then I have to stop because I didn't want to strain the injury. I remember I stopped at 38 kilometer because the pain was too much. I could not bear it. And uh, I came home a little bit disappointed. But I knew I, I still had a room to perform better. I came home. We started some training and know, some, some treatment. And uh, the pain didn't went down because it, uh, there was a torn muscle called uh, psoas. So it had teared and uh, uh, the healing process was very low. So I did some treatment, the whole of 2009, the last season until December. Though I was going for training a little bit, not with the group now, I was going alone. Uh, 2010, I remember the pain had gone down. I don't know. I, I, I just felt like the pain had gone down. So I, I asked the management to book me in London with Wanjiru, the late Wanjiru. And uh, I remember I was training with Wanjiru. He, in fact, he used to stay in my place in Kapsaret, where I was. 
and we trained together with Wanjiru until uh, the time when we were flying to London. When I did 30, I think it was 31, 32 somewhere there, I stopped. The pain was too much. I didn't want to push. I didn't want to continue. So I just stopped and that was it. So uh, I came back home from London and I, I asked the management to get me a doctor and uh, they organized for a doctor in, in, in Germany. So I went there, we did a number of tests and it was costly. It was very expensive because I remember I spent more than 1.5 million in treatment. And finally the doctor was like, Duncan, this sore tissue doesn't seem to respond to the training, no, with the treatment. So what I would suggest you to do is to go back home and rest completely. So I came home frustrated. I don't have cash. 2012, I had no, I had nothing completely. No cash, nothing. 2012 was the time I chose to dispose my property. Either dispose it or exchange with a property which was of lower value than mine so that the little cash it's on top will help me. And I remember, well, I had mentioned that to a few friends of mine and I think one of the friends uh, uh, was confronted by a lady. She had heard that I was, I was disposing my property. So she came to my place and uh, she was she asked me, okay, Duncan, I, I, I hear you want to dispose, to dispose your property. I told him yes, because I need some cash to treat myself, the injury, and to support me and my family. Uh, the lady was interested and she told me she also has a property and she wanted us to exchange. I, I, I told her, where is the property? She said, at that time during the exchange agreement, she said that the, 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 the title was in her, in her workplace in Bung. She promised me and my lawyer that she will get the title. I remember I flew out of the country with the little cash because the property, her property was valued at four million. My property was valued at nine million at that time. So uh, she was to add me five million on top of the property that we exchanged. So during the time of agreement, she gave me two million. And the remaining three million was to be paid on a certain period as indicated in the agreement. So I remember I, 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 I took the two million and uh, uh, I went to German for treatment. And uh, while I was away, you know, I could call her to ask if she has deposited the title to my lawyer's place so that my lawyer can transfer the ownership of the property into my names. But she played cat and mouse game. Uh, she knew what she was doing. So when I came back home, uh, I could, you know, do a follow-up. I could call her. She was like in Nairobi, uh, doing some job. I think it was like a workshop kind of thing that uh, when she gets back, she will get me the title. The lady played that tricks on me. At the same time, she was giving me the balance, the three million balance. So she gave me, she didn't honor the agreement as it indicates. So she started giving, giving me money in bits because she knew I was frustrated and I was broke. So she could come with like 100,000 and she knew I would, I, would, I would take the 100,000. At the same time, she is asking me that, oh, I'm still in Nairobi. Once I get back, I'll go get you the title so that you know, I, 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 we come and uh, take it to the lawyer so that the lawyer can facilitate the, 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 the ownership, transfer of ownership. She, she frustrated me because I never got the title. And for a period of 
like two years. She could play. She was playing that tricks. I'm not around. I'm away. I'll get you the title. Blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. At the same time, when she, she was around, she could get me like hundred thousand because she knew I'm frustrated. I'm broke. I would take the hundred thousand or two hundred thousand to keep me lie low, to keep me from not making noise. I remember she played that game for for like two two years, two years or three years. Around two thousand and fourteen, I managed to get um, a copy of that title though it was in somebody else's name not in her names and she had alleged in the agreement because in the agreement she she was alleging that she was the registered owner of that parcel of land so when i got the copy i asked her why is it in somebody else's name it showed that they had secured a loan with that title so i came back and asked her what's going on he, the, the, the title is in the bank. It shows that you were taken a loan with that title. And you took a loan on 21st of January 2012. And we entered into agreement on 22nd February 2012. Like 25 days before we entered into agreement, you had already secured a loan with the document. And she never disclosed that to me or my lawyer at that time of agreement. You get it? So that, only that shows that she frauded me. Because if she had said, hey, uh, I took a loan with the document, we wouldn't have entered into agreement. I could have looked for somebody else and sell the property. So she never disclosed that to me. And she knew what she was doing. Because there's no, I mean, there's no way you're taking a loan like today and in the next 20 days, you're entering into an agreement with somebody else and you're not mentioning that to him or her. It's pure fraud. So when, 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 I, when I confronted her about the, the loan, she was like, ah, no, Duncan, you know what? We had, finished, we had finished clearing the loan. I asked her, when? You just took the loan. 25 days before we entered into agreement. When did you finish the loan? And if you had finished the loan, for you to get back your title, it will take you maximum of 21 working days you to get back your title. So what happened? It is 2015 now. You don't have a title, I don't have the title. You're in my property, illegally. You frauded me off my property. She said, no, Danka, no, 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 there was an error with the bank, such kind of stuff. I told her, you know what, what I want is, the title. If you get me the title, I'll leave you in peace. And at that time, she had not cleared me with, with the balance. So she saw that I was angry. She gave she came with some cash just to cool me off. And she promised me that she's working on it for me to get the title. That Duncan, don't worry, I'll get you your title. These small issues with the bank, it shouldn't, you know, get you upset get frustrated for, for no reason at all. I took a word and she never she never honored me. She never honored a word that I'm working for your document. She never, she didn't. When the property had been advertised. Kirwa came now. We had not met with Kirwa, but now Kirwa came. He wanted to know who is this guy in Jamaica because they knew me as Jamaica and Kirwa knew Jamaica, but we had not met. So Kirwa came and he was like, oh, Duncan, so it's you who is in my property. I told him, yeah, we exchanged this property with another lady. So Kirwa was so open to me. She said, Duncan, we are in deep problem. The lady frauded me of this property. Even to death, that was 2015, the lady was still owing Kirwa 2.8 million. And we've already entered into another agreement. And she had not cleared Henry 
the remaining balance because she she paid Kirua, um, I think 1.8 million because the property had been valued for 4 million. So the remaining money was to be cleared on a certain period of, according to the agreement, which she didn't. And 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 what Kirua told me, what Kirua told me that transpired was that the lady. Uh, after 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 some time w when they had entered into agreement the lady came and asked Kirua that now that i didn't get the cash to clear you why don't you be a guarantor in the bank i take a loan so that when i get the loan i clear you Kirua was like okay that's fine because bottom line is he wants the money Kirua agreed so they took the loan and she never cleared Kirua. the same way she tricked me because when now I had, I, 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 I was, you know, at one point I was angry. And she was like, Duncan, you know, now that I, I'm, I'm not getting enough cash to sort you out as I pursue uh, uh, this thing, the title, eh? uh, why, don't you be a, why don't you be a guarantor? I get a loan, then I clear you while I do a follow-up on your title. I told her, if what you're saying is true, then I have no problem. That was our words, that Duncan, uh, be a guarantor, I take a loan so that I can clear you your balance. I, I told that if what you're saying is true, then that's fine. I, I guaranteed her. She took a loan. She took 8.5 million. She never cleared me the money. She kept paying me in bits. Now Kirua is here. The property had been gazetted, advertised for sale. Uh, Kirua told me, now, Duncan, uh, we need to get a lawyer to stop the sale, to stop the bank from selling the properties. Uh, because Wakiuza is his water to the... We Duncan in the Washamba, because the property is mine. Now, the lady in, uh, came to learn that Kirua uh, has come and we've talked with him i remember we managed to confront the lady but she was arrogant very rude i was kicked out of that property i came home Kwa mama mzazi huyu. i have nothing she's the one helping me now let me be honest after three times committing suicide because of my property it's for my kids My kids has to have a right to shelter. It's their property. It's where these guys will bury me. I won't be buried in a cemetery somewhere else. It's where I'll be buried. Up on the Mimi Ndazikiwa. Hmm? She threatened me. I remember I used not to sleep. I couldn't sleep. I could wake up three in the morning because that was that was the time I used to wake up for prayers. Wake up at three in the morning. I pray. Immediately after my prayer, I kuna usingizi. Na dondo kwa na machozi. I mean like when I think of my property and what the lady is doing to me. Na dondo kwa na machozi. But because she knows that I don't have money to get wakili. Because wakili wants a million and a quarter. His fees, which I can't raise. Hmm? I can't raise that much, that cash. Because if I had cash, I took a fee 2015. You mama But because she knew that I don't have money, she knew how to play her game. And she knew that I don't have money. So I, 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 I want to do Jamaica is funny anything. So she's comfortably sitting in my house. Knowing very well that Duncan, I'm going to get Can you imagine? To make exchange now your property. I love your property to make exchange now your I'm going to make exchange now your property. I'm going to make exchange now comfortable to live in my house. That's ugly. I mean, something has to be done for me to get justice.